today we're working on some review questions, um, six review questions. So the materials you need are, um, if you're able to, please print the sheet. It's just one page front and back. Um, or have a piece of paper, a separate sheet of paper, so that you can um, work out the problems on a separate sheet of plain paper if you're unable to print the worksheet. And you want to have your calculator handy for simply adding, subtracting, and dividing purposes. Um, before we begin, your homework is going to be a Delta Math review assignment. And when um, any of the Delta Math help videos, the question or the problem is explained usually using a two-way table. Okay, and um, my preference has always been, like, I, my go-to has always been a Venn diagram um, to figure out some of these probability questions, but two-way tables are also a good go-to. I mean, they can be used to solve the questions as well. So when... Um, so when I work through these problems on this worksheet, I'm going to try to attempt to solve them um, hopefully in three ways or, or at least two ways. That is, I would be using a Venn diagram to come up with a solution, um, also using a two-way table to come up with a solution, and also just using the formula. Okay, um, so there's more than one correct way of coming up with the answer. I think it, it's just a matter of what might fit best for the particular question, or it may be what you're most comfortable with. All right, so here we go. So first off, you need to know your formulas, all right? The probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. That's just a general formula. Now, of course, we can have, you know, if we're looking for the probability of it rains R or the probability it is sunny, S, then that would equal the probability of R plus the probability of S minus the probability of R and S. So if, let's say I said the probability of star or dollar sign, that's going to equal the probability of star plus the probability of dollar sign minus the probability of star and dollar sign. And when you're thinking about a Venn diagram, I'm going back to A and B. The overlap region here, this is the probability of A and B. And all three of these together, meaning this portion of A plus the overlap, and this portion of B, if we add them all up, this is equal to the probability of A or B. The probability of A given B, you have to know that this symbol is given. Probability of A given B. Is equal to the probability of A and B divided by the probability of whatever the given is, in this case given B, that goes in the denominator, the probability of B. And let's also kind of go, if I can go back to here and throw in our symbols, right, or is the union of, it looks like a U, union of, and and is the intersection. That's the upside down U or 
the um, rounded capital A without the vertical bar, or sorry, the horizontal bar. All right, so there is a spinner with 12 equal areas, numbered 1 through 12. If the spinner is spun one time, what is the probability that the result is A, a multiple of 3, or a multiple of 4? All right, well, there's, so there's 12 possibilities, right? There's 12 possible outcomes. So in this case, I might just list them. because the spinner has 12 equal areas. So a multiple of 3, I could list the multiples of 3. That would be 3, 6, 9, and 12. Or a multiple of 4. So the multiples of 4 are 4, 8, and 12. So the probability that the result is a multiple of 3 or a multiple of 4 is going to be the union of these two, right? So that would, if I go in order, it would be a 3, 4, 6, 8, 9, or 12. So it would be the number here, which is 4, plus the number here, which is 3, which is 7, but 12 is counted twice, so subtract the and part, 12. 7 minus 1 is 6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that would be um, 6 out of 12, or 1 half. And the probability of multiple of 3 and the multiple of 4, well, we already have the multiples of 3, the multiples of 4, and the overlap. What, it, what is both a multiple of 3 and a multiple of 4 is the number 12. So that is 1 out of 12. Or I could have looked at it as a Venn diagram if I wanted to set that up. I have multiples of 3, multiples of 4. So multiples of 3 are 3. 6, 9, and 12 is also a multiple of 4, so that goes in the overlap region. Multiples of 4 are 4, 8, and 12. So the or piece of this, I could add this up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So there's 6 out of a total of 12. And the and piece is just there's only 1 out of 12. So 6 twelfths for or, 1 twelfth for and. Number two, a, a corporation manufacturing car notes that 20% of potential customers would pay for a convertible. So 20% would pay for a convertible. 30% would pay for a premium sound system. So 30%, um, I'm just going to say sound system. And 5% would pay for both. What is the probability that a customer likes a convertible or a premium sound system? Okay. So um, if, I'm, if I'm using a Venn diagram first, right, and then I'll use a table and then the um, formula. So Venn diagram first. So we've got a convertible and premium sound system, S for sound system. 20% would pay for the convertible. So all of circle C is 20%. I can put 20% or I can put 0 0.20. Right? Probability could be a percentage or a decimal or a fraction. 30% would pay for a premium sound system. So the lollipop stick for the sound system is 30% or 0 0.30. 5% would pay for both. So this this is 5%, that's 0 0.05. All right, 5% or 0 0.05. What is the probability that the customer likes the convertible or the premium? All right, so we want the or piece here. All right, so we want the or. Okay, so if all of this here is 0.20 or 20 percent and this piece of circle C is 5 percent then that means that this portion has to be 15 percent.
or 0.15. And then if all of circle S is 30% and this piece is 5%, then this portion has to be 25% or 0.25. And if we add these up, um, 15 plus 5 is 20 plus 25 is 45. So that would be 45% is our answer. Okay, or if I think of a two-way table, um, let's see, I'm going to have um, convertible, not a convertible, a sound system, not a sound system. Total, total. So 20% convertible, so out of convertible total, 20%. Or 0.20. Um, and the total would be a hundred percent. The lower right hand corner would be one hundred percent or simply 1.00. Sound system was 30 percent. So total for sound system is 30 percent or 0 0.30 and five percent would pay for both. So um, intersection of sound system and convertible would be 5%. Okay, so now we can fill in the rest of the table. Um, and we are looking for OR. So let's see. So this would be 25%. This would be 15 because 5% plus 15% is 20%. And for the OR piece, we don't even need this. Um, but this here would be 30% plus 70 would bring us to 100. 20 plus 80 would bring us to 100 this way. And this in the middle here would have to be 55. Convertible OR premium sound system would be um, let's see, I'm using different colored pencils. Convertible is all of this, right, would be all of this, this total. And premium sound system would be all of this total. But then that 5% was counted twice, so you have to subtract it out, right? The 5 plus 15 gives you the 20, and the 5 plus 25 gives you the 30. Combine, eat, add these together, we have 50, but this was counted twice. So we subtract out the and, and that's also using our formula. That, so the probability of convertible and sound system is going to equal the probability of convertible plus the probability of sound system minus the probability of convertible and sound system. So that was our 20 plus 30% minus the 5% brought us to the 45. Just ran out of room to write this. I guess I'll have to put it here. But I do want to um, kind of point out that whenever you watch a Delta Math Help video, um, he uses tables to explain the answers. He does not use Venn diagrams. Okay, number three, uh, of 100 students survey, 95 like chocolate or raisins, 35 like both chocolate and raisins, and 40 like raisins. How many students like chocolate? Okay, so it looks like we've got chocolate and raisins. So if I start with a, um, I'll start with a table first here. So I'm going to use C for chocolate, not C for not chocolate, and R for raisins and not R. So I construct my two-way table here. Total. Um, 
squeeze that in there. Sorry. Okay. Um, so there's 100 total. 95 like chocolate or raisins. So I really can't put that on the... table here. So the number of chocolate or raisins is 95. 35 like both and 40 like raisins. And we want how many like chocolate. So we're looking for the number that like chocolate. How many? It's not a probability. It's a how many. Um, so I'm looking for this here. Okay, so I know that this is 5. This has to be 60. 40 plus 60 is 100. And I almost feel like um, I'm stuck now. Don't see where I can find anything else from the table. Alright, so now I think I would kind of either go to what I know, or which is sort of incorporating the table and the formula. Um, chocolate or raisins, right, would be would be this total plus this total minus the um, the and, right? So if the number that like chocolate or raisins is 95, so let me go to the formula. This is what we're trying to find, number that like chocolate right here. So number like chocolate or raisins is 95. The formula for that is going to be the number that like chocolate plus the number that like raisins minus the number that like chocolate and raisins. So number that like chocolate or raisins is 95. So we replace this with the number. The number that like chocolate is what we're trying to find. The number that like raisins we know is 40 minus the number that like chocolate and raisins is, thir is 35. So 40 subtract 35. So we're just solving this equation for the number that like chocolate. So combining that, that's 5. So 95 equals the number of chocolate plus 45 minus 35 is 5. And now we subtract 5 from each side. So the number that like chocolate is 90. Now, could I have gotten that using a Venn diagram? Mm. So I think I'll, I'll do this because I ran out of room there. So if I'm using a Venn diagram, chocolate, raisins, um, chocolate or raisins was 95, 35 like both, that's our overlapping region, and 40 like raisins. And we want to know how many students like chocolate. So we want the lollipop stick for chocolate. That's what we're trying to find. It's right here. Okay. So um, if all of these together is 95 and all of R is 40, that leaves this piece to be, or sorry, in this this overlap is 35, then this piece is 5, because 35 plus 5 is 40. So 35 plus 5 is 40, so if this is 40, and, all, and this plus the 40 equals 95, then that means this portion of C has to be 55. And then 
all of circle C is going to be 55 plus 35, which is our 90. Next, we have um, number four in contract negotiations between a local government agency and its workers. It is estimated that it, there is a 50% chance that an agreement will be reached on salaries of the workers. It's estimated that there is a 70% chance. So 50% chance for salaries and 70% chance for an agreement to be reached on insurance benefits. There's a 20% chance that no agreement will be reached on either issue. Um, find the probability that an agreement will be reached on both sides. So we're looking to find the probability of an agreement being reached on salaries and insurance. So I'm using S for salaries and I for insurance. So if I use a Venn diagram or a two-way table, I think with the last question I used the two-way table first, so for this one I'll use a Venn diagram. So we have salaries and insurance and 50% chance for salaries, that's a lollipop stick. I'm going to use the decimal point five zero. Insurance was 70% and neither um, is 20, so that's out here. So that means our OR would be um, 1 minus 0 0.20, which is 0 0.80. OK, so I want, I want the AND. This is what we're trying to find is here. So if this is 0 0.80, all of these together, and if I take all of circle I is 70, right, 0 0.70. So if this whole thing is 0 0.70, then that leaves this to be 0 0.10. And then if all of circle S is um, 0 0.50 and this portion's 0 0.10, then this has to be 0 0.40. Right? They have to add to 0 0.50. So that's our N. The probability of S and I is 0 0.40, or since um, these were given to us as um, percentages. I think I'll use our answer as a percent, 40 percent. Now in the two-way table, so we have um, salary, no salary, total. We have insurance, no insurance, total. So 50% agreement reached on salary. 70% agreement reached on insurance. And 20% no agreement reached on either, so no insurance, no salary. That's 0 0.20 here. This would be 1.00. 0. And now filling in, this has to be 0. 0.70 plus 0. 0.30 would bring us to 1.00. 0. 0. This is 0. 0.50. Their total has to be um, 1. Um, 0 0.30 and 0 0.20 added is 0 0.50. This is 0 0.10 and this is 0 0.4. 0 0.40 plus 0 0.30 is 0.70. And 0.40 plus 0.10 is 0.50. And we want the AND, which is right here. Number five, the survey about television viewing preferences was given to randomly selected freshmen at, and seniors at um, Fairport High School. The results are shown in the table below. 
So favorite type of program, sports, reality show, comedy series, se uh, senior, freshman. All right, notice here in this table, we don't have totals. We'll, we'll see if we need it. Uh, a student response is selected at random from the results. State the exact, if we want an exact probability. The student response is from a freshman. Given that the student prefers to watch reality shows on t on television, okay, so this is a given. So probability freshman given reality. I'll use R for reality. All right, so that I'm using the formula. Right, it's going to be the probability of um, freshman and reality divided by probability of reality. Okay, so given the re reality um, show, so we're just looking at this here, right? We're looking at that column here. What is the total? It is 213. And of those 213, which is our denominator, how many were freshmen? 103. One hundred three divided by two thirteen. One hundred three divided by two thirteen. Um, I do not believe this is a terminating decimal. All right. Don't give me the decimal, I want the exact value, so give me the fraction, 103 over 213. That's your answer. Exact value. If it said rounded, if they said the, state the probability rounded to nearest hundredth, then you would give the decimal rounded to nearest hundredth. This asks for the exact value. You leave it as a fraction. Number six, the study was this, yeah, and since that was already given to us in a table, that's, we're just going to work with the table, that's it. I'm not going to try to convert that to a Venn diagram. Number six, a study was designed to test the effectiveness of a new drug. Half the volunteers received the drug, the other half received the sugar pill. The probability of a volunteer receiving uh, the drug and getting well was 40%. What is the probability of a volunteer getting well given the volunteer received the drug? Okay, so um, we want the probability of getting well given they received the drug. So that's going to be the probability of, um, wrote that wrong. It's going to be the probability of well and given drug divided by probability of drug. Do we have any, any one of these? So half the volunteers receive the drug. So that's 0.5 or 50% and the probability of volunteer receiving the drug and getting well. Ah, so we have everything. So um, drug and getting well was 40. 40% 40 divided by and half the volunteers received the drug. Probability they received the drug was 50%. So 40% divided by 50% that's um, 0.8, that's 80%. So 0.8 or 80%. That's our answer. Okay. Um, so again, I want to mention that Delta Math, um, their explanation is usually, well, is all using... Um, the two-way tables. So if you're good, you you stop the video, you can go on to Delta Math problems. Um, otherwise, I am going to work this out using a table. 
So my table would be I have drug, no drug, total, well, not well, total. Half the volunteers receive the drug, drug total, 0.5. The other half, so not drug, 0.5. The probability a volunteer received the drug and gets well, so drug and well was 0.4. What is the probability of a volunteer getting well given the volunteer received the drug? So given they received the drug, so we're looking at this, probability of getting well. Okay, receive the drug. So out of the 0.5 that receive the drug, the probability they are well is 0.4. Okay, thank you once again.